Hello. Our devotion for today is entitled, A Way of Life. And it is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 13. The prophet writes, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Oh, listen diligent to me, listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. <clears throat> Instead, of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, the apostle wrote, We have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Oh, we have been occupied with the prophetic word for the entire season of Advent, just like our reading from the end of the book of Isaiah. We have seen that God sent this word not only to Israel, but to us as well. And when God sends out his word, it is to do something in the world. It's like rain and snow, as is the analogy that we read in verse number 10. It waters the ground and makes it fertile and bounteous. There's a living power in the word that comes from God's lips. It's like water for the thirsty or bread for the hungry. It grants life that needs to be nourished daily. We can drink enough water. Who can drink enough water to quench his thirst or eat enough food to be full for a month? Faith isn't just an idea. It's a way of life. And this life can be sustained only by the power of God's Spirit. And God sends his Spirit with the Word. Therefore, he says in verse number three, hear that your soul may live. 
You see, the Word of God isn't something that you can just put aside and uh, pick up again only when you think you need more of it. No. The Word is like an order in the military, a prescription from the hospital, or an invitation to a celebration. It is revelant right now. It is for this reason the Word says in verse number 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Now, you may think that it's all right to seek him after the first of the year. But as this year that we've experienced shows us, we don't live in a constant state. What's possible today might not be possible tomorrow. But if we don't respect the word, won't it be rendered ineffective? Won't it be a futile effort to read it? No, because refusing the word is also an action. It's impossible to do without becoming harder and more inaccessible, perhaps without even noticing it. Therefore, the word of God is always in action, causing within the person faith or defiance, grace or judgment. Throughout our own free will, we either come closer to God or choose to go further away. No one is ever left unaffected. Let us pray. We pray to you, Lord, that your word may always work in our lives the way you intend it to work. We pray to you that it may work here in our world, here within this congregation and in our church body, in our people, and in our land, as you want it to. None of us can receive your word, Lord, if you don't help us. Do not ever let us rest in peace and tranquility if we try to close our word to, your, to our hearts. Allow us no peace before we have peace with you. Do not get tired of us. We haven't earned it, but don't take your hand away from us. Help all of those who preach your word. Let it ring out as powerful, commanding, and intimate as it is. Help us to hear so our souls may live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.